Now that we've gone through working on our ER diagram and pushed it through to third normal form, that'd be a good idea to go back and talk about a couple of design patterns that will crop up in your beginning days of being a database designer. So let's talk about what those are. The first is uh, the idea of uh, ID versus composite keys. Uh, the second would be looking at lookup values, thirds, parent, child, or um, hierarchies, how to handle that. And then the third is many to many relationship. So let's go through those real quickly and see how I would handle them and move forward from there. So for the first topic, ID versus composite keys, you've seen me use this already where essentially when I have a table that is what we call intersection table, rather than make my primary key be dependent on the two foreign keys coming into the table, in this case, employee ID and store ID, I could make those the primary key. I actually create another column and made that the primary key, the employee history ID. There's a couple of reasons I do this. One, it makes the queries easier to write down the road because if I wanted to join this employee history ID table to like an audit trail or some other table, I'm not having to now remember to join in two fields from the primary key. So it just makes it simpler. And the other is, is that a primary key cannot have a null value in, uh, or a null in its uh, column. And so by having employee ID and store ID be outside, it does give you the flexibility that if you ever wanted to assign a null to either employee ID or store ID, you're able to do so. All right, let's move on to lookup values. And for here, I'm going to look at product type. Now here, we haven't really gone over what product type's going to hold, but I would assume it would be something like pizza, um, sandwich, pop, you know, items like that, broad categories for, for products, like for our, our small, large, medium pizzas and, and so on. So there's a couple ways that we could handle this. You know, they all start with a table. So I'm going to make a table called type and type ID. And then I could have maybe in here, um, like type category and then type name. And I'm going to get rid of this row three. And then some uh, examples of values that I could put in here would be, you know, for a type I could have, for instance, the category could be um, product, because that's what we're dealing with here as a table, right? So we'll make this the type category. And then the name could be like pizzas, um, product sandwiches product could be then um, drinks and then we'll do one last one Okay, so that would be the name. And then maybe I have another category out there for like employee, right? And the type could be like full-time and then part-time. Okay, so it begs the question then, well, I got category, so shouldn't that really be another idea? And it's like, yeah, you could go on and on with this. So maybe we have like a, a type ID and then another table that has um, just product and employee in it. So it would look like um, type category with um, product and then employee. So I would 
have another relational diagram right here. We'd call this type category. And then we would give it a type category name. And then I would remove these rows, of course. And then this would be type category ID. And this would go to the type ID and the category. I think I got that backwards. One category could have many types. And then I could have on product type, this would be type ID. All right, this is gonna get very confusing. And a type, could go to many types here. And this one actually needs to come down here to type category. This would be a foreign key. Okie doke. I've worked with databases like this and they get to be very, very hard to work with because once you're starting to do your selects, you're getting out into where you're doing like select where product equals, you know, type ID and category ID equals 56 because somehow you know that the 56 ID equals pizza. It's crazy. Or you could like do another join where, you know, oh, and what category name equals pizza it, it, and it becomes more joints. And in my mind it becomes very 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 hard to read the compelling reason that you would do this is like hey I got all my types wrapped up into these tight little tables and so if I need to add another type for a table I just need to add the type ID make sure I got categories set up in my my tables for type right here the type table and the categories and I'm good to go I personally now have switch gears and feel like it's better to have a type table per entity so I would not go in this route what I would do instead is go the route where I have a product and then I would do product type ID and then we would do here product type something like this then I'll get rid of these columns here and then I will use this here as and here I can say that I have a one product type can whoops I think I did this the wrong way one product type ID can relate to one or more in the product table. Personally, I think that's much easier to read. And since we had mentioned employees with part-time, full-time, then all I would do here is have an employee type and another table called employee type, which had two entries, full-time or part-time. So the next design pattern to look at is the hierarchy. And I don't really have a hierarchy in our system yet, but we could create one using employee. So I'm going to just copy everything here, make a new sheet, we'll call it hierarchy. 
hierarchy do a rename on that bring everything back in and let's talk about uh, like managers so employees have managers so one way we can work on this is to have a employee reference another employee so let's bring in we'll put it after the so I got duplicate stuff in here this is crazy there we go so we'll add the manager right here and we'll call this the employee manager ID and we'll build a relationship where each employee can have one manager but an employee could manage multiple people so it's a one to many relationship so now if I'm an employee my name is Bob and my managers name is Mark there's gonna be a row in the system for Mark let's say row one me as Bob there's row two and my ID for employee manager ID would point to row one which is Mark's role since he's my manager. And then this also allows Mark to have a manager. And so there's can be many levels of uh, management because of this situation. That can also be a downside to this, right? Because now you have a, a condition where you, you may get an organization that runs away from you or becomes too complex and you need to work through that. But to get you going, this is a great way to do parent-child. And then lastly, we talked about many-to-many, -many. and we've talked about that in the past, right? Where we had, uh, you know, came up with uh, products in the customer order, right? Let's go back to our diagram here. I think the second draft will show us a many to many right and and how did we how do we handle that well we talked about normalization and stuff but another way to think about it is, is when you've seen many to many if you can put a table in between these two you can usually get rid of the many and the many and that table is called an intersection table so again if I just bring copy these pieces over and let's just make a quick diagram here I'm not going to worry about the other columns in the table, but if I need to reduce this customer order into from a many to many, like I said, I can put an intersection table in between them and then ask yourself, what, what would this table represent? Right. And in my mind it represents the num the basically the products that I can order right or that I have ordered so I know we called it order item before but there's we could call it something else customer order products so it's just literally just a combination of the two names right and then here we could say this is the product ID I already broke my rule by I don't like to use um, plural there we go this is getting a little big and then uh, for the first row we could have the customer order ID and then in the second row Ah, second row we'd have product. So here's the interesting thing with this is with product, how many products could I order at one time? 
So the one to many, a order is going to have one product on the order. A product can be in many product orders, right? So I can say that this one product could be on many product orders. So this is the many. It's almost like saying many over to here, right? But now we're, we're casting that many to this intersection table. So that's going to take care of this many right here. If you think about it. And now I have the customer order. So let's talk about that. So one customer order could be about multiple products, right? So I have one customer order and it's about multiple products. And so in effect, this is really talking about the fact that I can have multiple products on my order and that my product can be on multiple customer orders going in the other direction. So this many here is really talking about coming over here. So that's kind of what's working here. So now I can get rid of this. And now I have the I can essentially say that I have a order that has one or more products on it. So the only thing I need to add now on this is the quantity. now we have built that intersection table and removed the many to many. So let's just talk through this one last time because it might seem kind of interesting or confusing. So we had mentioned that a product can be on many orders in the past and we had order over here. So this, this represents the many going from product. So this would be the the many going in this direction. And we've also said that a order can have many products. So that's the many going in the other direction. So they kind of point at each other, but if the intersection table wasn't here, they would pass each other in a sense, and it would be many to many is the idea. Okay, so I hope these patterns help you out. There's a good start on them. In the next lesson, we're going to take our entity relationship diagram that we built and turn it into a real database. So I'll see you in the next lesson.